The Tale of Despero, Chapter 36, What Mig Carried. And while the mouse slept, Roscuro put his terrible plan into effect. Would you like to hear, reader, how it all unfolded? The story is not a pretty one. There's violence in it, and cruelty, but stories that are not pretty have a certain value, too, I suppose. Everything, as you well know, having lived in this world long enough to have figured out a thing or two for yourself, cannot always be sweetness and light. Listen, this is how it happened. First, the rat finished, once and for all, the job he had started long ago. He chewed through Gregory's rope, all the way through it, so that the jailer became lost in the maze of the dungeon. Late at night, when the castle was dark, the serving girl, Miggery Sow, climbed the stairs to the princess's room. In her hand she carried a candle, and in the pockets of her apron were two very ominous things. In the right pocket, hidden in case they should encounter anyone on the stairs, was a rat with a spoon on his head and a cloak of red around his shoulders. In the left pocket was a kitchen knife, the same knife that Miggery Sow had used to cut off the tail of a certain mouse. These were the things a rat and a knife and a candle that Mig carried with her as she climbed up, up, up the stairs. Gore, she shouted at the rat. It's dark, ain't it? Yes, yes, whispered Roscuro from her pocket. It's quite dark, my dear. When I am princess, began Meg. Shh said Roscuro. May I suggest that you keep your glorious plans for the future to yourself? And may I further suggest that you keep your voice down to a whisper? We are, after all, on a covert mission. Do you know how to whisper, my dear? I do, shouted Meg. Then please, said Roscuro, please institute this knowledge immediately. Gore whispered Meg. All right. Thank you, said Roscuro. Do I need to review with you again our plan of action? I got it all straight right here in my head, whispered Meg, and she tapped the side of her head with one finger. How comforting, said Roscuro. Perhaps, my dear, we should go over it again one more time, just to be sure. Well said Meg. We go into the princess's room, and she will be sleeping and snoozing and snoring, and I will wake her up and show her the knife and say, If you does not want to get hurt, princess, you must come with me. And you will not hurt her, correct? said Roscuro. No, I won't, because I want her to live so that she can be my lady-in-waiting when I become the princess. Exactly said Roscuro. That will be her divine comeuppance. Gore, whispered Mig. Yes, her divine comeuppance. Mig had, of course, no idea what the phrase divine com comeuppance meant, but she very much liked the sound of it, and she repeated it over and over to herself, until Roscuro said, And then? And then? continued Mig. I tells her to get out of her princess bed and come with me on a little journey. Ha, 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 said Roscuro. A little journey, that is right. Ha, I love the understatement of that phrase. A little journey. Uh, it will be a little journey indeed, it will. And then, said Mig, who was now coming to her favorite part of the plan, we take her to the deep downs, and we gives her some long lessons in how to be a serving girl, and we gives me some short lessons in how to be a princess, and we is all done studying up. We switch places. I gets to be the princess, and she gets to be the maid. Gore. Reader, this is the very plan that Roscuro presented to Meg when he first met her. It was, of course, a ridiculous plan. No one would ever, not for one blind minute, mistake Meg for the princess, or the princess for Meg. But Miggery Sow, 
as I pointed out to you before, was not the sharpest knife in the drawer. And, reader, too, she wanted so desperately to become a princess. She wanted, oh, how she wanted. And it was because of this terrible wanting that she was able to believe in Rascuro's plan with every ounce of her heart. The rat's real plan was, in a way, more simple and more terrible. He intended to take the princess to the deepest, darkest part of the dungeon. He intended to have Miggery put chains on the princess's hands and her feet, and he intended to keep the glittering, glowing, laughing princess there in the dark. Forever.